everyone, my name is Chelsea and welcome back to my channel. For today's video, we are doing the Contradictions book tag. So this is a video I'm pretty sure I was actually tagged in to do like a month or two ago but I don't remember who even tagged me because I have just been so off of like my game of trying to make sure I have videos up and so if you did thank you for bringing this to my attention um but yeah I forgot who tagged me in this so this is a video basically about contradictions which I think we all sort of knew but basically saying like I liked this but not this or I didn't like this but I did like this and we have some questions slash prompts to lead us to those discussions so we're gonna jump on in and let's see what the first one is the first one says I love this genre but I didn't like this book okay so for me I absolutely love sci-fi I know I talk about that on my channel I read lots of different genres of books but like in general if somebody was gonna ask me my favorite genre sci-fi is pretty much always the one that I pick however I did not like to sleep in a sea of stars by Christopher Paolini I do not have this book anymore because I actually unhauled it last year after reading it last year as a buddy read and absolutely hating my time with it, the biggest issue with this is that it is a huge book and definitely suffers from repetition. Like each part of the book seems to follow the same pattern. I also did not feel a connection to any of the characters at all. So even when things were sort of like turning on their head or it was supposed to be like a bad thing happening I didn't really care about that and while I do feel like he did a lot of research going into like the actual science aspect of the sci-fi there was a lot of stuff being thrown at us that didn't actually matter in those scenes and so I feel like it suffered from a lack of editing like it really needed to be edited down more um, I finished the whole book because I did do it as a buddy read but neither of us enjoyed our time reading it so it really should have been a DNF number two I rarely read this genre but I loved this book now for me I have a couple genres that I could have gone with but the ones that definitely came to mind were either like nonfiction which I know is not a genre but I like never read nonfiction or historical fiction I hardly ever gravitate toward historical fiction like ever it's very rare for me to do that but one historical fiction book that I remember reading and absolutely loving um, is The Secret History of the Pink Carnation by Lauren Willig. So this actually is a book that I still own, which should tell you that I liked it because I don't keep books on my shelves if they are under a three and a half star, like, like at all. This is a book I did read forever ago, so I don't fully remember everything, but it is mostly historical fiction. It does have some mystery elements. It does have some romance elements, but basically this is like a historical fiction spy novel, and it talks about the Scarlet Pimpernel, which I don't fully remember like all of the history with that, but I do believe that is a character that was written by a woman like forever ago. Like it is a very historical type of figure. Um, but I do remember really enjoying this one, even though it is historical fiction. This is the first book in a series that I don't know if it's like a full on series or if it's a series of companion novels. I have wanted to continue in the past, but I think I would probably need to reread this one before I do that because it has literally been years like maybe 10 years since i've read this one number three i love this trope but i didn't like this book so when i think of tropes especially when we get into like the nitty-gritty of like what kind of tropes um i like to read or don't like to read more often than not they come about in romance so i actually probably could have picked romance for one of my favorite genres but like i said before sci-fi usually is the one i think about the most but for the tropes i absolutely love fake dating i love the fact that like the characters are in this fake relationship the characters are sort of slowly figuring out they like each other and are actually in a real relationship instead of the fake relationship however I did not enjoy the wedding crasher by Mia Sosa this was my first Mia Sosa book and I did actually give it a three stars like it wasn't necessarily a bad thing but for something that was supposed to be a fake dating romance I don't think it really hit all the boxes for me we did have some fake dating trope in there but in general they weren't really figuring out their relationship with each other or their feelings for each other there was a lot more lust and and the author was trying to put in a lot more of like the sexy times than I would prefer in the fact that like we didn't have any build up in the relationship before those things happened and so for me personally um, I don't think this was necessarily as romantic of a romance novel as it could have been and I didn't get the feelings out of the fake dating trope that I really would have liked 
Number four, I hate this trope, but I loved this book. So in the same sort of realm, because again, when I think about tropes, I almost always go to romance. I do not like insta-love. It is one of those things that I think you can do well, but most of the time it is not. It either turns into insta-lust or the insta-love is just so unrealistic and when I say unrealistic I mean more in like a contemporary setting if you're having a paranormal type of book insta-love can be done well and so for that I wanted to mention the Night World series by LJ Smith so far I've only read these first three books and the first one Secret Vampire is not my favorite so mostly I want to talk about these two so book two Daughters of Darkness and book three Spellbinder. These are books that were written in the 90s. They are very short mass markets, like 200 something pages. I read these in one sitting. They are YA paranormal romance, and every single book so far has basically had an insta love, faded mates sort of thing. But it works so well for this series, and I think part of it is because there is some sort of real tangible connection almost between the characters like both of them whether they are part of the night world or not already they have this feeling they have this faded mates connection that they can just tell as soon as they start to feel that um, and it plays into how they deal with their relationship and how they deal with friends and family and they are a little bit campy paranormal romance sort of stuff but the insta love is actually insta love not insta lust and it works in this context. Number five, I love this author, but I didn't like this book. This one was a little bit tough, um, just because I know that there's some authors that I probably love, and some books might have been hit or miss on some things, um, but this one author specifically that I wanted to talk about is C.M. Stunnich. So they are an indie author, self-published author, that has been very, very prolific. I have read the beginning of multiple series by this author um, and I say the beginning of multiple series because they're at this point in their career where some of their older series um, I guess did not do as well or the inspiration hasn't struck them again as much and so they have moved on to more lucrative projects or things that have tropes in them that were like the height of indie romance at the time. So um, that's sort of what we're gonna get into here. Whereas I've read books by them like the Rock Hard Beautiful series that I actually have read all three books. I think there's only three books out currently for that series. Gave like five out of five stars for every single one. This is a rock star reverse harem polyamorous romance that I just really really enjoyed very character driven very romance driven when we get there um definitely has some hard topics in it though like the content warnings probably have like a big old list but i really loved the writing of that one and the characterization i also really loved pack even red and i think the next two or three books after that one i have not finished the current ones that are out Although I have purchased them because like I like to support my indie authors so even though I know I'm waiting for a further book in the series I will usually still buy them as they come out to encourage them to write them but this is again a reverse harem polyamorous type of romance paranormal romance with werewolves and again I really really enjoyed the characterization and the development of the story and the characters in the books that I have read and then another one that I for sure just like absolutely loved was Spirited and Haunted. So the first two books of this series have been out. I don't know how many books are supposed to be in this series but again reverse harem polyamorous romance but with our main character being alive I don't know exactly what kind of creature she is supposed to be. I don't think she's fully human. She basically ends up attracting a group of guys where most of them are dead, like ghosts, spirits. We do have a lot of paranormal elements in this one as well. And all of those series, I gave like every single book five out of five stars. There was so much good characterization and development and the stories were very unique that I just personally absolutely loved. Both Pack Eben Red, that series, the Zara Wolf series, and the Academy of Spirits series, that second one that I was talking about, they're not finished. And they are books that I feel like were very, very, very good. However, um, around the time when more of those books should have been written, bully romances got really prevalent in the reverse harem, polyamorous romance sphere, and in romances in general. And I tried a couple series by C.M. Stunnich that had the bully 
tropes in them. Um, but the one I wanted to talk about today specifically is the Adamson All Boys Academy series. The first book I actually did enjoy because we had some romance, we had some characterization, it also had a mystery element to it, and so it wasn't like too much bullying. There was some, it was I don't want to say necessarily well deserved, but our female main character was an asshole. And so when the bullying came about, it was more in retaliation for her actions <laughs> of her sort of already being an asshole. Um, so it wasn't as bad. However, book two and book three in this series got worse and worse for me, in my opinion. One thing for me, I don't think I like the bully tropes much. And the fact that, like, that was all anybody was putting out in the indie self-published sphere for romance at that time was a little disappointing just because it was something that wasn't like my thing as much but because this is an author I loved I thought I was going to enjoy it more um, but also this is a series set in high school and when you get further into the series I think book two and book three there is flat out very graphic sex on page between minors. And me being around 30 when I read this, I did not enjoy that. These characters also did not feel like high school characters. It could have easily been aged up to college age or more. Like these could have been graduate students and it would have made so much more sense. So the fact that we had characters that were basically all under 18, very graphic moments, um, just did not do it for me. Also, I was reading this series for the mystery elements because it was set up so well in the first book and it fell apart by the third book. Um, I did not believe any of the reveals for that. Um, and so I sort of wish this author, even though I do love a lot of their work and I actually do want to read more that I have not read because like I said, they are very, very prolific. I don't think some of their newer things are things that I would enjoy as much because we are still in the bully sphere or the more dark romance sphere right now. Number six, I previously disliked a book by this author, but I loved this book. Now, this is probably the hardest question on this list because if I really don't like a book by an author, I am not very likely to give them a second chance. However, there was one that I was able to think of, and I have definitely talked about this in videos within the last month or so because I feel like this is a question that pops up every so often, like a book that surprised you, and so obviously I had to talk about Lost Boy and Christina Henry. Um, I read The Ghost Tree by Christina Henry in 2020. Absolutely hated it for multiple reasons. The story didn't quite pan out the way I wanted it to, being the fact that it should have been a horror story, but the horror elements didn't show up until like 80% into the book. Um, but also we had like sexual abuse of a minor and racism yeah. and things that I didn't think necessarily needed to be in the book because they didn't have a big explanation or reason for the like horror elements. It was just in the story. So um, I was not too sure how I was going to feel about this book because of the fact that I actually had purchased this one before I read The Ghost Tree. So the only reason I actually gave this author a second chance is because I owned the book and then I did a vlog of like Peter Pan inspired books. I actually really enjoy this one. I don't know if I would necessarily say love because I only give it four out of five stars, but this one definitely has horror elements. It is like a horror origin story for Captain Hook and Peter Pan and I really did enjoy the writing style and the characterization and that kind of stuff in here because we didn't have a lot of very problematic elements that I experienced in the ghost tree. So this is one of those ones where I was pleasantly surprised by what I read because I was fully not expecting to like another book by this author. Number seven, I love this cover but I didn't like this book. So obviously I don't have a book here to show you because if I do not like a book, I do not keep it on my shelves. But speaking of Peter Pan, I actually did used to own this book with this cover. I absolutely love these chalk inspired classic covers. However, I did not enjoy my reading of the original Peter Pan classic. Definitely has some very problematic elements in there, especially like in regards to racism and stuff. And the writing style is not for me. It's very much the classic writing style of that period that I do not enjoy, um, which is part of the reason I don't read a lot of historical fiction as well, because I feel like they try to put that on sometimes. Um, but the cover is something I absolutely love. 
Number eight, I don't like this cover, but I loved this book. So this one was another hard one because I don't think I have very many books that like I hate the cover of. So I went with one that was a little bit more disappointing, which is this cover of Blackbirds by Chuck Wendig. So I think I've talked about this on my channel before, um, but this was a book series that I think has six books in total and the first three books were actually published as mass market paperbacks. With this type of cover here, I absolutely love these covers and the way that they have the symbolism and everything because like if you really look really closely you can see bits and pieces in the character portrait that I just absolutely love. So like when you put them together this way, this is such a better cover than this one. I was just so disappointed in the fact that after three books of the series, they decided to rebrand. And this is a hardcover, like I'm happy to have hardcovers on my shelves and everything like that, but they decided to rebrand with these compared to what they had before. Um, so I don't like this cover compared to the original. However, I did give this book, the first book, um, five out of five stars. I actually don't remember what I gave books two and three, but I have read the first three books of the series um, because I read them up until they took them off the shelves to like make new covers. And I really, really enjoy it. This series is about Miriam Black. So the whole series is actually the Miriam Black series. And she is somebody who can tell how somebody is going to die, I believe by touching them. And she has resigned herself to the fact that there is no way to change fate. Because in the past, if she has tried, that sometimes inevitably leads to her causing their death. Um, but in this first book, she meets somebody who she decides she wants to try to save him. She wants to try to save them. And so I just, I love the concept, first of all, but I also love Miriam Black as a character. She is quite crass and rude and just like wholly who she is. And so, yes, I fell in love with the series. I really do need to do a reread and then finish the series eventually. Um, but yeah, if we're gonna be talking solely about covers, this one, so much better than this one but I did give this book five stars. And so that is going to be all the questions besides tagging people to do this tag. But like I mentioned before, I can't even remember who actually tagged me because I'm pretty sure somebody did. So if you have been seeing this around, because I know there's been quite a few people that have done this recently, and you have not been tagged yet and you want to do this, because I do find it very interesting to see the contradictions that people have. Like you go on your channel and you're like, oh yeah, I love sci-fi. But then you don't always get to hear about I like sci-fi, but I did not like this. So I think that's very, very fun. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up to let me know. Subscribe to this channel if you'd like to see more videos. I do have videos up on Thursdays right now, so I will see you then. Bye. Remember, Here. that is a book. So came up. Okay. Okay, show the camera. Good job, dude.